just a few short miles from where we're standing right now is the heart of Black Los Angeles. That's where a neighborhood rich in history is undergoing a transformative renaissance. Once restricted to black and brown families, Lemert Park is now the epicenter of another change thanks to the Destination Crenshaw Project. Yes, I used to have the fancy to go see my friend on the other side of the street. <laughs> okay, climbing trees, doing all yeah. kinds of Yeah, I have marks for those. Tony and Lorraine Bradley have called LA's Lemert Park neighborhood home for more than 70 years now. We were the first. It didn't look like anybody else was ever coming. Their parents, Tom and Ethel Bradley, moved their family here in 1950. At a time when black and brown people were not allowed to live in the neighborhood, they were the first. Well, of course, the neighborhood was white. They did not appreciate a black family moving here. Uh, there was a restricted covenant that said we weren't allowed to move here. Um, a white intermediary had to help my folks buy the place. Tom Bradley, a police officer at the time, went on to become the first black mayor of L.A. and the city's longest serving mayor. The Bradleys say change did not come easy, but eventually the neighborhood became an enclave for middle and upper class black families and celebrities alike. It was starting to grow. It was Ella Fitzgerald, Diana Washington, and Ray Charles. A storied Los Angeles community now at the center of another wave of change. Just blocks away from the Bradley home, Crenshaw Boulevard. This is the main black business corridor anywhere west of Chicago. The spine of LA's black community is undergoing a renaissance. Accelerated by LA's newest light rail line that will connect mass transit to LAX for the first time ahead of the 2028 Olympics. Everybody who uses public transportation or light rail coming out of LAX is gonna come down Crenshaw Boulevard. What are they gonna see? We want them to see us. It's a question LA City Council member Marquise Harris Dawson wants to make sure does not disenfranchise black businesses and gentrify the community. Brought people together to say, okay, we have this situation, we're facing a challenge uh, in our community, what do we do about it? Enter Destination Crenshaw. So it turned from just the economic development opportunity to all spatial justice, right? So we want trees along our corridor, we want pocket parks and community spaces, we want economic development for our business job creation through our construction. It's being called the largest black public art project in the country. This is a fan favorite. This is Charles Dixon's Crenshaw Car Culture. Um, so this is 10 foot high Sanufu figures uh, with 12 cars, uh, all low riders that are gonna be painted by local body shops. With monuments, murals, new landscaping and parks, the open air outdoor museum will span a 1.3 mile stretch of Crenshaw Boulevard. This is an elevated platform park. People will be able to actually sit here. And include Sankofa Park, a 40,000 square foot outdoor amphitheater and public space. There'll be dozens of art opportunities for local artists. The subject for this painting, for this mural, his name is Paul Revere Williams. Local artist Patrick Henry has been commissioned to create an 80-foot mural for Destination Crenshaw to showcase famed black architect Paul Revere Williams, whose works still live on today. So this is the Beverly Hills Hotel. That's one of his most famous buildings. But my favorite one is the uh, LA theme, the LAX theme park. Henry's mural will be one of about 100 different art installations featured along Crenshaw Boulevard. I would hope that it becomes a destination for people to come from around the world. Destination Crenshaw is also helping local businesses. We opened Doolin's on Crenshaw six weeks after the Rodney King riots. The most direct impact is Destination Crenshaw is going to uh, paint a mural on the 60 foot long wall in front of my restaurant. Serving soul food since 1992, Doolin's is a staple in the community and recently reopened after an 18 month renovation to align with future development. We need to make sure that the culture and the businesses that exist now don't just, just disappear because then the, the community and the neighborhood ceases to be what it has always been it always been. For Tony and Lorraine, the courage it took for them to make this leap. It's a future they're looking forward to, one they say they can't help but to remember was shaped by the bravery of our past. You say to yourself, oh, we really were trailblazers when we, when we began. 
She's an unsung hero who leads with love. Shirley Raines' passion for helping the homeless is sparked from a personal story rooted in pain. Hey girl, how you doing? On just about any day of the week. We out there every weekend uh, across from the Salvation Army. You can find Shirley Raines. And what you want, a honey bun cupcake donut or cookies? Cookies. And her team of volunteers helping to make a difference in the lives of those often forgotten. Now, I think we're doing like a thousand people a week that we serve between the areas of Las Vegas, San Diego, and Skid Row. We're in Skid Row every single Tuesday. Here on LA's Skid Row, every week a long line of people in need wait for Reigns and her nonprofit, Beauty to the Streets, to arrive. Yeah, you put a couple in there, but I, would, I, would I love you for bringing your art? From hot meals to clothes, hygiene products, haircuts, and makeovers, Beauty to the Streets is not just helping the hungry and the unhoused in Southern California and Las Vegas. They're changing the narrative surrounding them. I hate to say that I'm, that I'm humanizing them or I'm doing anything other than just pointing a camera out there and people who have good hearts are changing their mind and they're starting to see, wait a minute, this isn't what I thought it was. With hundreds of thousands of social media followers. How you doing, Kay? Reigns sets up a live stream cell phone camera inside her donation truck, giving her followers a look behind the scenes while introducing them to the men and women who she calls worthy kings and queens. Imagine if I can point that camera in everybody's face. You would probably fall in love with half of the people that you that you hold judgment of, over. While some receive nicknames like Cigarette Man, others like Mercedes need no introduction. All walk away feeling seen and heard after visiting Beauty to the Streets. Oh my gosh, Mercedes. I think um, I made them feel okay about themselves. Here I am doing the work that I'm doing in the community, but I'm not a church going person. I'm not a therapist. I don't have a degree. You know, I really came from a broken place. Seven years ago, Reigns started Beauty to the Streets, inspired by her own homelessness while seeking purpose after her two-year-old son's accidental death. So everything I do comes from the bad parts and the trauma. Mm. And if I didn't have those, my God, my God, where would my purpose be? I would have no purpose if I didn't go through all of those things. Yeah. How's work or how's the, the program? Work is going good. It's going good? Yeah, I'm working at the CISO. Oh, you over there? Wait, yeah. the CISO? Yeah. The CISO? It's these types of connections that are challenging stereotypes and uplifting others, both online and on the ground. And while beauty is often in the eye of the beholder, there's no doubt that Shirley Reigns is bringing beauty to our streets and strength to those who need it most. I'm an activist. I stand in the likes of our ancestors. Educator, leader, history maker. Those are just some of the words that describe Cal State LA's new president, Bernicia johnson Eanes. Her path to higher education is one that almost didn't happen, but some unexpected advice changed her journey. Now she's hoping to make a difference in the lives of students here in Los Angeles. I feel like I've met a few. Have I? Tell me. Yes, I am. My name is Jason. No, I've Chester. met you. You don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you. Good to, Good see, to you. see you. The new president of Cal State Los Angeles, Berencia Johnson Eanes, chatting it up with students, not for our camera, but because it's genuinely one of her favorite things to do. The more you lead in, in school, then you lead later. So then you can be the president, right? <laughs> As both the first female and black female to lead Cal State LA, the weight and history of the moment is not lost on this educator. It is profound for me to understand um, that we're in this moment, in this place right now. You know, there's sort of a bittersweet to it. You want to say to yourself, why did it take so long? And then on the flip side of it, I feel very honored in understanding that it's a commitment of the CSU and the Board of Trustees and many other people to recognize that there is time and space for change, possibly. But also that um, leadership comes, you know, in all different shapes and sizes. President Johnson Eanes grew up in Indianapolis with parents who were huge on education. Her mother was a school teacher and her father was a doctor. When she was younger, she thought the arts might be her path. But Berencia gravitated toward helping others, getting her undergrad degree, master's degree, and PhD in clinical social work. A mentor encouraged President Johnson Eanes to go into administration, where she could positively influence even more people, and she hasn't looked back. 
now setting her sights on uplifting Cal State LA students. And so we, I think, have the opportunity to be innovative and nimble and, and aware and meet them where they are, which has always been the thing, but it's a different dynamic right now because there's so much going on. And the complexities of each individual student's situation is huge, right? And then we have the post-COVID reality. President Johnson Eanes knows what it's like to be doubted, recalling the time a guidance counselor once told her as a young student she'd never go to college. She now tells her students that sometimes you have to be uncomfortable to be comfortable and that you have to be uncomfortable to go to that next level of achievement. This history maker's aspiration for her time at Cal State LA is to build a strong leadership team and ask the students to buy in to new strategic goals like increasing graduation rates and closing the achievement gap. So what continues to drive her? President Johnson Eanes keeps a reminder of just how far her entire family has come. My sisters and I keep a cotton stock in our office in a very nice vase, all of us, because we are profoundly aware of the fact that um, there is a very short distance between that cotton field that my grandmother was in and our offices. Don't go anywhere. Our celebration of black history is just getting started. Coming up, putting the spotlight on a hidden crisis. What's supposed to be a happy time for expecting mothers quickly turns tragic and in a lot of cases deadly. Up next, the black maternal crisis and what's being done to put a dent in the alarming disparity. And still ahead, you've probably seen his work, but you most likely don't know his name. We're going to introduce you to the talented artist who's carving his own path to success. It's a crisis that's plaguing black women at an alarming rate. In the U.S., they have a higher risk of dying or experiencing severe complications after childbirth. This epidemic doesn't just affect low-income women. In fact, several big-name celebrities are sharing their stories. They're also using their voices to empower black women and break barriers in a broken system. They're raising the stakes. Each of us has faced losing our lives in the lives of our unborn children. By using their voices to save lives and bridge disparities in black maternal health. The birth of my oldest was my first experience of a kind of institutionalized racism and paternalism that can kill. From actresses and athletes to attorneys and health advocates, these crusaders have propelled a hidden crisis into the spotlight. Black mothers dying at alarming rates all across the U.S. or experiencing severe complications after childbirth due to disparities in medical care. That elephant is, is out, the, out the gate and you cannot pull it back. If you think this type of racial inequality only impacts those at the lower end of the socioeconomic spectrum, think again. So we're leaving the hospital after we had a lot of complications, but look who we got. I got a baby girl. Tennis superstar Serena Williams is one of several famous moms who've opened up about traumatic experiences during childbirth that could have been fatal, with medical staff reportedly refusing to seriously address her concerns for more tests and medications, given her history of blood clots. She eventually suffered a pulmonary embolism following a C-section with her first child, which could have killed her. While these mothers survived, so many others weren't so lucky. I miss her, her children um, are without a mother. TV judge Glenda Hatchett still grieves the loss of her daughter-in-law, Kira Dixon, who died at Cedar sinai Medical Center in 2016. Kira was married to Hatchett's son, Charles Johnson, who continues to push for legislative changes in Washington following her death. Lack of compassion and lack of humanity that failed my wife and is failing black mothers time and time again. Hatchett says Kira was a healthy 39-year-old who couldn't wait to welcome the couple's second child into the world. Instead, Kira died from massive blood loss hours after giving birth. Johnson eventually settled a wrongful death lawsuit with Cedars, claiming doctors failed to properly respond to Kira's symptoms and provide appropriate care during those critical hours. Do anything to have her back, but I do know that we pay honor to her life by saving other lives. We have to do better in a nation where so many women die. 
Cura's case has raised the bar on this issue. For the first time ever, the Department of Health and Human Services has opened an investigation into her death, with Cedars at the center of this government probe, which, depending on the outcome, could impact the hospital's federal funding. Hospitals have to be accountable and they have to show what is happening and the difference between the treatment of black and brown women and other women, then that will be significant. And life-saving, says Sonia Young Adam. She heads the California Black Women's Health Project, an instrumental organization that works directly with hospitals and medical groups across California, examining their practices to help end systemic bias. Adam believes is rooted in historical racism and in some cases goes back to the training these healthcare professionals received in school. This great awareness that we're seeing across California, but really across the nation. I mean, this is the first time in, you know, in our generations here, you know, for black people in this country where this this conversation is is happening. But that progress, advocates admit, is slow. In October, California Attorney General Rob Bonta announced the results of a new Department of Justice investigation reviewing racial bias among healthcare workers in perinatal settings. The findings startling. Bonta says the disparity in maternal death rates in California reflects the deep and shameful racial inequities in our health care system. And how are you doing today? Those troubling statistics keep black OBGYNs like Dr. Khadija Lang busy. It's heartbreaking and it makes you angry. Ensuring her patients receive proper care outside her medical setting while advocating for themselves, especially if they feel something is wrong. So it's very concerning when you see patients coming back in and I see them coming from emergency rooms all over with these problems. And, and it's just, it's disturbing to me when you see that this is how colleagues are treating patients. Cedar sinai representatives told us in a statement that while they're not commenting on any potential investigation, their clinicians, leaders, and researchers have long been concerned with national disparities in black maternal health. They say they continue to address these issues here in Los Angeles, as well as at the state and national level. Coming up, he never went to art school. He's not classically trained, but his work speaks for itself. I said, God, I want to be an artist one day when I grow up. And I go, can you help me with that? Jackie Hadnot isn't a household name, but he's making history right here in LA. Coming up, why the self-taught woodcarver says his dedication to the arts is a gift he hopes to pass down to future generations. <laughs> You may not know his name, but his mark will forever be etched in L.A. history. Jackie Hadnot is a local woodcarver. His shop is nestled in the heart of L.A.'s famed Olvera Street. Jackie's talent is more than a labor of love. He says it gives his life meaning. You'll notice there's a lot of trains in here. The reason being is that's what I'm known for as a train artist. That would be mainly carbon trains. When I go off, get off my day job, the average person might stop by the local Starbucks or go and watch movies or watch the TV. This is my TV. I remember five years old, I would always sit on our back tree there on the ranch. And I remember looking to the sunrise as best as I could. And I remember asking those words. I said, God, I want to be an artist one day when I grow up. And I go, can you help me with that? I told my mom and dad that I wanted to car start carving trains. They went down and got me a piece of wood and some wood carving tools and a mallet to hit with. And they looked at the book that I was showing them of a train and they said, Jack, how are you going to get that image onto the wood? And I said, I'm going to draw it like it was easy to me. And I was so into it until I drew it out and I carved it. They hung the first one up at a local gallery in Santa Clarita. We get a lot of people that come down here. How are you guys doing? And they get inspired. That's in the music, dance, writers, and so on. They get inspired by seeing what I've done. That's beautiful. <laughs> it gives me like a rowing effect where if you were at a Dodger game and you see how people just go up like this and it goes over around the stage, I'm having fun. <laughs> That's how many people I get. It means a lot to me, man. <laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> After I got older, I'm asking God for another gift. 
is be able to give this back. That's a lot of work he does. Eh? He, he does a lot and donates a lot too. Eh? A firefighter named Bert, he said it would be nice if you could carve our patch out. How long does this project take? This t it's taken me five and a half months to hand carve. Five and a half months? What makes this piece so special to the city of Los Angeles? And this firefighter number, badge number 217, Los Angeles Fire Department, uh, Frank Hopkins. When that building was owned by the military years and years and years ago, what happened there is years down the road when the fire department took it over as a training center, they, that firefighter didn't make it in the fire when they were trying to put it out. That number over there is very important right there. And that's an honoring of all those firefighters that went down. If you guys have been walking around Avera Street and you've seen the cross in front, I'm the third one with that. I'm the one that made the cross. Hey man, it's good seeing you though. <laughs> all right. It's a beautiful cross. If you looked at the wood that we're looking at or the ground that we stand on or anything, there's hundreds of different types of anything that we ever can imagine. It would be a very boring world if it was only one of a kind of anything. That's what makes the world go around. Thank you for joining us for this KTLA Half Hour Special honoring black history. And thank you to SoFi Stadium and the Kinsey Collection. I'm Chris Schauble. And I'm Kareen Winter. Our celebration of black history continues all year long. And to watch any of the stories that you saw in this special, log on to our website, ktla.com. Goodbye. Goodbye.